Hi, I'm Rhett Myers. I'm formerly the pro here at Casper Kill. We'll go through the course today hole by hole, and all the great players, whether it's Nicholas or Hogan, there's something about course management that's so important. So we're gonna show you how to set up the hit better drives, what clubs to use off the tee, how to play your layup shots a little better, and maybe possibly where to hit your balls onto the green. We're at the first hole at the Casper Kill Country Club. It's a par five, and it's really a great opening hole. It's a three shot hole for nine out of 10 golfers. But the key here is to get off the tee. There's trouble to the left with out of bounds fence. There's a big bowl down there, and to fly it over that ridge is gonna take probably a 240 yard shot. So the smart player is gonna play just probably short of the ridge, and then there's a creek out there that you have to navigate really take a strong player to possibly hit it over that creek in two. So once again, you're gonna lay up there. I'd say it is a driver hole. A three wood though probably might be good enough. Then the second shot is probably gonna be more of a five wood to lay up short of that creek. Short of the creek is probably 120, 130 into the green. For the longer hitters, they can try to hit it over the ridge, which is like 240 or 50 yards, get it down on the flat, down the hill, and probably have possibly a four iron or a hybrid into the green. It's an easy, relatively flat first green. And on the opening holes, a lot of famous architects want to make the first hole not overly demanding. So here we are on hole number two. Now the golf course can become more difficult for whether you're playing the white tees or blue tees. This, uh, this hole's somewhat of a monster. Tee shot is going to hit that bank and you're not going to get any roll at all. It take a very long player to get it up to the top of the ridge and hit it over. Nine out of 10 people are going to hit it short. Now you're back there probably close to 200 yards with an elevated green. To the right is a bank on top of the right side of the green, and that is just jail. Short, you're gonna have a brutal chip shot up with a bunker in the front. The green is two-tiered with a big slope. Uh, this is a real golf hole. If you play this at par, you're really playing some golf. This is our signature hole. It's a par three, it has five sets of tees. It can go 220 from the back, and to your forward tees there are probably 120 yards. The pond right here to my right, it probably doesn't come into play at all, but the one in front of the green comes in play for probably half the golfers. Very flat, forgiving green. Once you get on, you can roll a long putt in, but the wind can whip across these two ponds, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful hole. But this would be the signature hole here at Casper Kill. Here we are in the fourth hole at Casper Kill Country Club. It's a relatively easy hole with a very difficult green but it's a short hole. A lot of room out there to hit it. Probably no matter what level, you can hit a driver out there. Fairway's gotta be 35 yards wide, 40 yards wide, and then it takes an approach over some bunkers, but to be honest with you, the bunkers are really short of the green and out of play. So once you play the hole once, you'll know that you have no trouble flying it back onto the green. But the green slopes from back to front heavily, and uh, a lot can happen when you get up on the green, but tee to green, easy hole. All right, here we are in the fifth hole. This is sort of to the back side of the golf course, and it's uh, always known as a, it's a real par five. Very few people can reach this hole. You'd have to be an extremely long hitter. It's in that 530, 540 range, would take two great shots, but it's a three shot hole for 99 out of 100 players. Plenty of room to hit it off the tee. You play it up short down the middle, there's some room there, so not a lot of trouble on this hole, but the length for the average player is probably the trouble. The green is relatively simple green, unless it's tucked the whole location tuck left over that bunker up there, which in turn makes it a little more difficult shot. But if you play your third shot from the middle of the green, it's probably an easy two putt. You play smart, you get yourself a par. All right, we're on the sixth hole here at Casper Kill. Relatively short golf hole for even the average amateur. Uh, out to the right, we've got numerous trees that can cause trouble. So a block shot or a faded shot is trouble. Tree line down the left, so a hook is no good but there's some room to hit it down there and you kind of hit it to a, a flat area with the green sitting up. Since right now we're probably 80 yards from the green and a lot of people may hit their ball down in this area right here. As you can see, we're pretty much right on top of the green and the flag hole location is on the front. Um, problem here is if you leave it a little short, it's gonna hit the bank and come back. And if you hit it all the way to the back of the green, you've got a 40 foot putt coming back. So the front hole location here makes the hole a little more challenging. But in general, you're gonna probably have a pitching wedge in your hand from here. And it's a relatively easy benign hole and a fun one to play. We're on hole seven here at Casper Kill and this is one of the best holes on the golf course. Uh, it's a very rewarding par, but things can go the wrong way if you don't play it smart. Off the tee here for a longer player, when you block it to the right, it goes over that little ridge and rolls into the woods. If you hit it left, you're in the bunkers and you have a 150 yard bunker shot over a creek. Bottom line is there is some room in that fairway and the average player who's gonna play a tee a little bit up from this one can get it in that short grass no problem at all. 
Now we've hit a pretty good drive down here and we're only about 120 yards. If you weren't gonna hit it this far and you were back 150, this is one of the toughest approaches on the golf course. One once described this, it's like a fortress being guarded, the green. Reason is, to the right there's a bunker, behind the green there's a bunker. If you actually miss the bunker behind, you're in the woods. If you're short, you're dropping down on the bank because of the creek in the front. Very difficult second shot for any level player, but it's a great one. Here we are in hole number eight here at Casper Kill. Very good par three. And that's not necessarily because of the length, although we're back here on the blue tee, but even from the, the average amateur is probably gonna have about 150 yard shot. The problem is, to two thirds of the green on the left side, it's gonna be all carry. So if they don't hit exactly what club they think they can reach at 150 and they hit at 145, it's gonna hit the bank and it's coming back toward the deadly creek in the front. The easiest hole location's over to the right because if you're short, you have a little bailout area there and you can chip on because it's relatively flat. But the whole two thirds of the green to the left is sort of long left to right and narrow deep. And there's a little hump in the middle and that can cause some problems too. But overall, I'd say for the average person, it's somewhat daunting par three that can equal somewhat of a high number, but it's a, it's a good strong par three. All right, we're on the ninth hole here at Casper Kill. This hole's not a long hole, but it's a dog leg left for a, a, for a long hitter. It's probably three wood off the tee to the bottom of the hill, 125 up with a pitching wedge. But that's not the average player. Nine out of 10 players, you've got to get it out to the corner to see the second shot, which takes a good solid shot. Anything out to the right is in trouble in the woods. Every, anything to the left is in that drainage ditch. The average amateur might be about 120, 130 back there if they hit a good drive. Tough shot uphill. Definitely add one to two more clubs to get it back there. Brutal bunker to the right. Just avoid that at all costs. Better to be short and on the bank chipping than in that bunker. Once you get up there, the green isn't too bad. But from here, the key is to pick the right club to get the ball up on the middle of the green to give yourself a good putt. Here we are at Casper Kill's 10th hole. This is a good par five, three shot hole for just about everybody. You gotta play a couple smart shots. Now off the tee, you can't block it right. The tree line is right down the right side. Pulling it left, you suddenly turn the hole into a monster hole if you're back around the corner. It calls probably for a little fade, but to be honest with you, a good straight shot is not gonna go through the fairway. To reach in two, you'd have to be an extremely long hitter, but let's take most golfers gonna play it as a three shot hole. Everything is banked right to left. So when you're back here with your three or five wood, just trying to advance it to get it closer and maybe get it within 100 yards, you gotta hit it down the right side either in the right rough or just on the right side of the fairway. Everything is ricocheting left, rolling 30, 40 feet down in the corner on the left side of the fairway, and that's where you'll come in for your third shot. Pretty much very difficult approach shot because a lot's happening. Short right, you're in a very tough bunker. Short left behind me, you've got a 30, 40 yard bunker shot that nobody wants. When you get up to the green, you have the first third pretty much has this ridge on it that anything that hits is coming backwards. Anything up on the top is a little easier because it's relatively flat. We'll roll a ball up there and as you can see, it kind of kills it on the pitch shot. But that's a three footer that uh, I think most people can make. Here we are on 11. This is a tough golf hole for you know, all levels of player. We're up here toward the blue tees. White tees are a little closer. We got a creek to carry it probably from here, 180 yards onto the bottom of the fairway. Very great design here by Trent Jones Sr. in that when you hit your ball out on the fairway up there, even up there 20, 30 yards, it's banked, no roll. You'd have to fly the ball 250 yards to get it up on top of the flat, and then it'll ricochet forward another 20, but that's for very few players. Second shot's a long one. A lot of people are gonna come in here probably with three woods and five woods. The green runs left to right, very narrow front to back. It's a stout hole, and uh, to have a par, you're really gonna feel rewarded. All right, we're here on number 12 at Casper Kill, and this is a great par three. I really enjoy this par three. From the white tees, it's about 150 yard shot, so it's relatively forgiving distance. However, anything to the right is possibly in a watery grave, including a bunker over there. A lot of people bail out to the left, but there's another bunker over there that's gonna welcome you. The green front to back is pretty big. There's a little hump in the middle, but overall, relatively easy green to putt. But for the blue tees where we are here, and a back right hole location, it's 220 yards back there, and this is one heck of a par three. All right, here we are on 13. This is a great golf hole. One thing with Casper Kill, every golf hole out here is individual and different. And you can't say that about a lot of golf courses. Every par five is different, par three and par fours. And this just shows what we're talking about. Dog leg left, breeze is always sort of up here, playing a little havoc with distance. 
Uh, white tees up in front of us. You still have to hit a good drive to get it out to the corner. And it's a heck of a nice challenging shot with trouble both left and right. Then from there back there, you're gonna have anywhere between 140 and 180 yards in if you've hit a decent drive according to what level you are. Anything left is a bailout area where you'll have a relatively easy pitch shot if you pull it left. Two-tier green, green can be tricky. That's a tough one up there. But the big thing here, taking an extra club to get it back there. And when the whole location is on the back half, relatively flat, but if the whole location is basically on the front half, now you're gonna have to play the break of the green. And as you can see here, if the whole location's front right and you hit a ball middle on the left, you can see here how this ball really is gonna bend and take quite a bit of turn. The golf hole is not an overly long hole, but the wind seems to always be in your face here five or 10 miles an hour, which makes the tee shot play a little longer. And then the second shot is gonna to be to an elevated green, which is definitely one or one and a half clubs. The tee shot needs to stay left. Almost if you pull the ball left, you'll actually be on the fairway. Whereas a ball, what seems like straight or blocked just 10 yards, is in those bunkers on the corner that are strategically placed there. So the spot here is down the left side and there's plenty of room to hit it though. Okay, we're on the 15th tee from the blue tees here at Casper Kill. Good golf hole. Anything left in the rough, you're gonna have a giant classic oak tree that's gonna block you out to the green, especially if the hole's cut to the left side. So it's down the right side as your play. It's uh, not a long hole. Everything kind of bounces a little right to left once it hits the fairway, but uh, whether you're a mid-handicap player or a better player, you want to get on the right side, it's going to kick 10, 15 feet left and set you up for a good approach. This would be the position, everybody, that you wouldn't want to be in. This is the pulled tee shot from any tee back there that gets you in trouble. And now you have this classic tree that actually makes the hole. This makes the hole right here because you've got to get your tee shot over to the right. We're in jail right now. We have a 100-foot tree that's 60, 70 feet wide in front of us, and a lot of players are just going to have to play out. So keep your ball on the right side of the fairway. We're here on 16 at Casper Kill. Relatively short par three, elevated tee to a very large circular green. Little bit of bunker action left and right, but overall there's a big area in the middle that you can actually roll the ball on from back here. I'd say most amateurs feel this is a pretty easy par three. Once you get on the green, easiest green on the golf course to putt. 50 footer, 30 footer, you actually feel the greens are always true here that that ball, you can roll it in for a two. We've had a lot of birdies here, and I think this is probably the number one hole. We actually have quite a few hole-in-ones over the years. We're on 17 here at Casper Kill. This is a great par four. Almost uh, over the years viewed as sort of the bowling alley hole and that the tree line fairway both sides, left and right are in trouble. Best thing to do is get it to down the right side. For the average amateur, it's a three shot hole. For a better player, it's still a good mid iron. Great golf hole. We're in an area right now at about 150 yards from the green. The thing is, it doesn't play 150, it probably plays 20 yards longer, especially if the hole location like today is cut on the back left. The green is uh, somewhat sloped from back to front. Uh, I wouldn't call it a difficult green, there's a lot of flat spots up there, but the big key is to get this ball up on the green. You've got to play some smart golf. If you're down here putting up to this back left hole location, relatively easy putt. If you're over here, you're going to swing one from top to bottom. But I'll roll the ball here up just to show you the pace. All right, we're on 18 here, our final hole here at Casper Kill. After 17 good ones, the last one is also a good one. It's probably a three shot hole for the average player. It is reachable in two for a long hitter. A little bit of a blind tee shot. You're not sure where you're going here, but right rough. It's still all right if you're playing it as three, three shot hole. There's a bunker way out there to the left, which is not reachable by most people. So it's just split it down the middle. You got some room to hit it. And that sets up your second shot. Menacing bunker right in front of the green. Best to be short of it, 50 yards. Play a 50, 60 yard third shot. You can still have a putt for birdie. Green's tough, left to right motion. So you gotta watch exactly what's going on when you get closer to the green. But right now the key is to probably stay left of the bunker and short of the green on your second shot. Longer player is gonna be able to fly it on that green from about 220 or so, maybe 230 back here. But average player, it's a three shot hole for sure. There's quite a bit more to this green than actually most people think. You can't be short because you're in the bunker. The second shot needs to be short and left over in the fairway because anything in the right, which could be a straight shot to the green, is in the rough. Once you get up here, anything right of the green that you're pitching is down this huge slope that I'm standing on and any hole locations in here, the ball's impossible to stop. 
it's a big green, so if you have a long putt down there, especially in tournament conditions, there's some speed going here. So even from where I am now, this is a very testy putt to get it close to the hole and probably impossible to leave it short. <laughs> 